Hard Night VR is a zombie shooter. It's pretty basic and it, there's not much of a story here. It has a level select design. It's also a little buggy. I tried it out on Viveport Infinity and I was having lots of fun playing it despite all its flaws. I actually decided to go ahead and buy it on the Steam store to reward the devs. Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer. Today we're going to do a review for Hard Night VR, a game released on the Steam store July 4th, 2020 by developer Fly Dream Dev. It normally retails for 10 bucks. It's currently on sale, 50% off, $5. It's available for the HTC Vive, Valve Index, and the Oculus Rift. However, I can confirm it works perfectly fine on Windows Mixed Reality, but the movement is bound to the touchpad, so beware of that. I always prefer when it's bound to the joystick, that way it's easier to move around. You do have full look of motion and smooth turning, but the smooth turning is very slow so it's kind of painful to turn you might want to consider turning in real life you do have to play standing because when i tried to play seated i always had trouble reaching the different ammunition and the grenades switching out weapons i just found it was a lot easier to play standing so i recommend you only play standing uh this is a fun zombie shooter but it's very limited and it's very basic there's also several flaws in this game like i mentioned there's not much of a story it's a level select system and the bad part about that is that there's no checkpoints you basically have to beat the level in order to be able to restart at the next level if you die before reaching the end of the level you will restart at the very beginning and that can be frustrating. I died a couple of times at the very end of the levels and it was kind of frustrating to have to deal with that. This game is running on the Unreal Engine and I did have some performance issues that were kind of random. I had frame rate drops in certain sections of the levels and just some levels ran a whole lot better than others. I think it had to do with the amount of enemies and amount of stuff going on, but I'm not able to confirm that. I just know that I had performance issues on some levels and some others it was running perfectly fine. So I was getting 90 frames per second in some levels and then it would drop all the way down to 30. There was just also an overall clunkiness to the gameplay as well as some bugs. A lot of the bugs weren't game breaking, they were just annoying type bugs. For example, enemies would get stuck behind doors and they would clip halfway through the door or just go completely through it. And that was a recurring theme in this game. It seemed like anytime there was a door of some kind, there would always be some kind of issue. And yes, if you got too close to the door, you could take damage from the zombies meleeing you. So beware of that. There was just also an overall lack of polish, opening doors, uh, reloading weapons, changing weapons, accidentally picking up a weapon that you didn't want to. The grenades, they weren't the smoothest experience trying to use them. Although I will say the grenades here were better than most games. Most grenades in VR are terrible. This was somewhat better than the average, but still not really good. Uh, throwing them felt fine, it's just the whole process of using them that could use some real fine tuning along with the reload process. Uh, some weapons you do have to charge. I believe in my video that you're seeing, you never see me charge a weapon. That's because I figured out very soon that weapons that you don't have to charge are just so much better because in this game, a lot of the difficulty is just being overrun by zombies. So if you have to charge a weapon or in the case of the shotguns you have to pump the shotgun that's just a second or so that you're losing that just makes it that much easier to die because in this game you die pretty quickly once you're taking melee damage so obviously if you don't have to charge the weapon that just makes it that much faster to reload and you want to be able to fire very quickly or else you'll be overrun by zombies and you'll die and you don't want that trust me so there's a plethora of weapons to choose from in this game, but basically you have assault rifles, you have shotguns, you have SMGs, you have pistols, and I think one level has a sniper rifle. And you also have several attachments that you can put on your weapon, or there's some weapons that already have those weapon attachments, such as a silencer, 
a flashlight, a laser pointer, and that definitely becomes something that's very important, especially in the later levels when it's very dark and you do need at least one weapon with a flashlight so you're able to see. And definitely having a laser pointer helps with being able to get on target just a little bit faster. And that's just the name of this game. You have to get on target quickly, you have to reload quickly, and you can obviously move back, but some of the zombies, especially later on, do move pretty quickly. So you just have to be prepared for those situations. And if you go too fast, they can just come out of anywhere. So it makes the whole gameplay a little bit on the tense side and it does give it sort of a survival feel. Although there is plenty of ammo all around, so you don't really have to worry about conserving ammo. Obviously, some weapons are better in certain situations than others. If there is a lot of enemies that don't have body armor, I found the shotgun was very effective. However, if they had body armor, I found the assault rifle was, was very good. And I, I found the SMGs or the pistols to be good for those tight situations where you just need to take some shots while you're trying to get a reload on your main weapon. Now, there was only seven levels and there wasn't enough enemy variety for my taste. A lot of the enemies acted exactly the same way. The main difference was some of them were faster than others and some of them had very huge body armor versus some others. But basically they all just come straight towards you and the problem is that you get overrun. So that's what makes this game fun. It's just you, your need to be careful and strategic in how you approach the levels. The level design themselves are actually quite fun. There are some very huge levels in here. Although I found the driving level to be pretty bad just because the driving mechanic in this game is pretty awful. One of the worst driving mechanics in VR. So beware of that. Overall, I do recommend this game. It is a fun shooter, but you do have to accept all the faults this game has. And there are several. However, the actual gunplay itself, although like I said, it's more on the arcade kind of survival light type of gameplay. The guns do feel, weapons do feel different and there are some very tense moments in this game and the different level designs, the verticality, the, the sprawly nature of it is all fun. The hunting for keys and even opening locked doors was just okay for me, but really this needed more of a story and that would have made it an even better experience along with some polish. This game took me about four to six hours to complete. I'm not exactly sure because I'm in Vibecord Infinity and it just didn't track my hours. And I had fun overall. Despite all the issues, I was having fun. This is better than most VR zombie shooters by quite a bit. If I have to rate it, I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10. If the developers work on just polishing this game up and adding some kind of story this would be something very special for vr and like i mentioned i decided to go ahead and buy this game even though i already finished it on Viport infinity just to support the devs that's how much i like this game so yeah give it a shot anyways i'm fast lawyer if you liked my review don't forget to like comment and subscribe and as always have a wonderful day goodbye Thank you.